Today I have a microwave oven that is dead. This is an over the range Kenmore, kind of like the one that I changed the door hook on uh, about a year or so ago. This one here is dead. They say it is popping the fuse. Let's uh, take a look. And so let's just do some quick tests here. Got my meter in ohms mode. We'll just test the power cord and confirm that there's a dead short with the door closed. This is important. Pay attention. Fuse is not blown because if the fuse was blown, there'd be no continuity. But it's tripping the circuit breaker. Open the door and the short kind of goes away. Now we have a short. Any guys guess what the problem is? We'll put it in ohms mode here. I'm seeing 150 ohms. That's going to be the uh, uh, resistance of the transformer for the timer. Dead short. No short. Any idea what the problem is? It's the secondary switch. The short switch. The one that it's, its job the only job it has is to trip the fuse in the event that the primary switch fails to open. One of two things could have happened. This, the switch itself just may have gotten lazy. It could be um, the bracket is worn out on this unit. That's always a possibility. Um, or it could be the primary switch was gummed up and didn't open and caused the secondary switch to fail. We won't know until we get the unit apart. So let's get this one get this one ripped apart and take a look at the switches. The switches that we're after are buried deep inside here so I'm going to pull the, the, the timer board off so that I can access the switches make it easy to see and then we'll go and check it out. It's going to be the bottom one that's bad. So to remove the actual timer board just one screw through here I didn't show you removing the other screws because they're pretty obvious which ones to come out. Screws in the top and the back and along the bottom edge on both sides come out and then the top just lifts off. But now that this screw is out, I um, should be able to lift this. Move this one screw up here as well I think has to come out. Not mistaken. And then this whole piece should lift out. piece lifts out and then this will come out as well. It just lifts and pulls out right from the front here. So I'm just going to disconnect the connectors, just squeeze the pin on the back of them to undo the connectors, unplug the relay and unplug the main power connector. That way the control board can be removed and placed out of the way to work on the switches because I'm going to need to take this door hook out. So these two screws here need to come out. These are what hold the door hook in place. I'll inspect the door hook while I've got it apart. But I, I can't see. Well, it could be worn. Yeah, I, I shouldn't say it, it's not worn because I haven't looked at it yet. But in the last one of these, that certainly was the case. The door hook was worn. Just lift and it should pull straight out and then you can lift it out kind of work your way around here to get this thing out of here and here are the switches in question and it's, it's going to be this I like the bottom one here oh wait a minute and it should be this switch here this, is, this should be the short switch on here. It's a normally closed switch, which is this one. We'll just uh, measure it. Okay. Now when I activate that switch, it should it should open. Yeah, see? I got the switch pushed 
and the switch is not shutting off. So this switch is internally has failed. That is the problem. Let's get the switch out of this unit. And I'll have to go and find another switch. So that's taken out by just pulling up with a little hook on the back here. You guys can see it. You just lift that little clip up. Be careful not to break the switch, break this plastic because this piece is expensive. But if you pop that little uh, catch up, get a bigger screwdriver, the switch will pull straight back. So we just lift and push or pull. And that switch pops up like that. This is the bad switch. We can hook it up again and measure it. It's normally closed contact. And when I push that down, that should go open. But it's not. Because the switch contacts have welded shut. Now this can be caused by a couple things. It could be somebody um, slamming the door or pulling the door from the bottom like a child. This is over top of a range, so if someone pulls the door from the bottom and they cause the door to flex and twist and the bottom uh, catch here disengages first. What I'm getting at is if, the, if say a small child pulls on the door and they're, and they're not very tall and they're trying to reach um, and, and open a, a microwave that's over top of the range and they're grabbing the door from the bottom and they pull and they cause the door to flex like that and this switch close, uh, shorts or closes before the top switch opens bingo switch blows up blows the fuse why it didn't blow the fuse in here is amazing because usually it'll blow the internal fuse but uh, in this case it just tripped the breaker uh, which is good because I don't, don't have to replace the fuse Now it, it probably hasn't even stressed this switch because sometimes this switch will fail and if this switch fails to open then this switch will close and blow the fuse. But um, we'll test this switch up here and see whether this one's any good. I'm sure this switch is fine because when I was opening the door and it's got a, a solid click to it. When I was opening and closing the door the switch was opening and closing but we, for, just for the heck of it we'll test it. Now remember, this switch is a normally open switch, so there will be no power or no continuity until I press the switch down. So there we have no continuity, and then when I press the switch down, we'll have continuity. So that switch is fine. It's just the monitor switch that uh, needs to be repaired. Now, if I was um, if I was repairing this for someone who was going to keep the microwave oven, um, I'd be changing both switches out. But this particular unit came from my neighbor up the street, who has sold their house, and the new owners are taking possession of the house in four days. She wants a working microwave. She's told me that um, they're going to do some renovations. So there's a good chance they're going to renovate the kitchen and this unit is going to be turfed anyway, but she just wants it working. So I'm going to go and find a new replacement switch. We'll put a new switch in this unit and get this one working. Uh, we'll take the switch apart too and I'll show you guys what happens. The, the contacts are welded together. So let me just, uh, we'll take this one apart first and then I'll go find a switch. I'll have to probably go and buy one, but I don't think I've got one here, but we'll get a switch for it. Okay, here we go. The switch is going to pop apart. Sorry about the color balance, by the way, um, because the uh, uh, I just I just freed up the weld, but I got the door open, so I got a bit of light coming in from outside, which is making the picture a little bit blue. Plus, I've got my my big uh, work light on behind me. So here's the internal structure of this, and you can see I just fixed the switch by when I took it apart. But if you look down at the contacts here, you'll see that they have actually welded themselves together. If I pull this one out apart, but. Uh, if you look down at the contacts here, you'll see where they have pitted and they basically welded themselves. You can see right in here. Where the contact made contact with this one and welded itself shut. 
when I took the switch apart, the uh, contact cleared itself. So if I put this contact back in here, this switch will probably still work. I am going to change it though. I'm not going to uh, put an old switch back in the unit just for that reason because um, it has failed. But if I test it now, the switch will work. So we're closed. Now we're open. That's how it's supposed to work. Okay, now I need to uh, run up to the store and get a new switch. And you push it in until it locks in place. You'll see the little catch here will snap in place. catch that lines up here, locks in place, drop it down like that. You want the, the, the uh, door uh, hook assembly as far forward as possible. And these screws should be fairly snug because if they come loose, they're going to create problems down the road. If we want to test the operation, the shorting switch will short when the door is pulled open, but it shouldn't short until the door is actually open. So if I pull open the door, it will short, which is what it's supposed to do. Now what you want to have happen is you want the top switch to open before the other switch shorts. So the top switch is now open, also the bottom switch is open. As I continue to pull the door open, you'll hear the bottom switch click. And this is what you want. I'm watching the top switch here as I open it up. Top switch should open first. There, top switch just opened. And then the bottom switch open, which is what you want. Okay, front panel goes back on plug the, the uh, plugs into it first. Another place I've noticed where there's higher than average failure on these type of units is when they are installed over a gas range because the heat from the gas range from the burners creates a lot of heat inside these units which can actually melt that bracket and that's probably what made the bracket on my other one that I repaired last year go bad because it was installed with a, over a gas range. So keep that in mind that the, the plastic can be affected by heat cause the bracket to fail. When I worked at the repair shop we did a lot of microwave servicing and over the range units installed over a gas range were never a good combination. They failed much higher than over an electric or an induction range. There we go. Drop that in place. Yeah, I'll test it before I put it together. 
Then we'll put the top on it and send it on its way. Okay, get a glass of water. I don't have the turntable for this thing, so it's have to set it in here so, somewhere. Power it up. Got my heavy duty power plug. We'll set it for well, a couple minutes. How's this thing work? Time cook. I guess I have to set the clock on this first. There. Time cook. Say one minute. That should be enough to warm it up. It's working, the light's coming on inside so it's not blowing any fuses. Yeah, water's warm. Here we go, we'll heat again. Actually, I probably don't even need to go that long. 30 seconds, this water's already warm. Yeah, it's warm. And how we set the clock on this thing? Clock settings. Twelve fifty one. There we go. Oh, press start. Okay. That's how you set the clock. Okay, it's done. Normally when you change these switches, you're going to change both of them. You're gonna change the upper and the lower switch because when one switch has failed, it could have damaged the other one. Um let's just say the owner of this unit just wants it to get it working as absolutely cheap as they can because the house is sold and uh, they don't want to uh, have the new people move in and the microwave not being lit up so as long as it's working that's all they care about but normally you're going to change both the upper switch and the lower switch if either switch has failed because the upper switch could have caused this to fail the lower switch could have caused it to fail um, the door hook which is not worn on this one but that door hook that, 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 that the switch is mounted I've changed that before on a model identical to this. I did one last year identical to this unit. Those door hooks do fail. Uh, they will cause it as well. The, the monitor switch, which I'll show you in a diagram how that works, just to we'll refresh that again. That's what failed on this one. Normally you're going to change both of them. Let's take a look at what these switches do. I normally do this at the beginning, but I'm doing it at the end this time just so we can, just a refresher because I've talked about it before. Anyway, let's take a look at how those switches work. So once again, a review of how the switches are arranged in a microwave oven. Okay, your plug, you get your hot and your neutral, and of course your, your ground. So this is your safety ground, your neutral. And I'm gonna draw this in a very simplified manner. You've got your main power transformer. This is for your magnetron and it is connected to the neutral line on one side. The hot side goes through a fuse and then it goes into, first of all, you've got your transformer for your low voltage. And this is for the, the clock and so forth. And then the goes through a primary interlock switch. Then there's a secondary interlock switch, which is the, the bottom switch, which is applied to ground. And from here it goes to the relay and to the transformer. This is your relay. 
to timer. Now this is drawn very simplistic. I'm not drawing the light bulb or circuit or anything. When you close, the, when the door is closed, this is actually not driven correctly, drawn correctly. If the door is open, this switch is closed like this. Okay, the door open. And the reason why this switch is closed is in the event that the primary switch, when you when you uh, pull the door open, this switch opens first, and then this switch closes. In the event that this switch doesn't open, this switch's job, if this switch is closed, as you can see, you've got a dead short, which will blow the fuse. Now, when you when you close the door, so if I draw it again, so if I draw it as a door closed, it would be like this. And that's your relay. And then the other switch here would be open. Right, so when the door is closed, you've got a complete circuit here going to the relay, which is controlled by the timer circuit to turn the magnetron off and on. And of course, this, this side here goes to your, your, your diode and your capacitor and then up to your magnetron or whichever way they've got like the, the capacitors actually ahead. Capacitors here, the diode. If you want me to draw it correctly, high voltage winding, one side to ground, and then the other side you have um, capacitor, and then you've got your diode. One side of the diode goes to ground, and then the other side of the diode goes to your magnetron. And it goes to one side of your magnetron, the filament, and then the other, the other, uh, there's also another winding off of here, which is the low voltage winding, which is connected to the filament, right? And this is your filament inside the magnetron. So it's a, it's a hot, a heated cathode filament, right? And then your plate is over here, which is the plate is the, the, uh, Magnetron itself. That's that's the uh, anode. Anyway, that's simplistic. But when your door is open, this switch is closed, and this switch here is open. If the door is closed, the switch is closed. The switch is open. If this, when you pull the door open, if this switch shorts, if this switch fails to open, this switch will put a short on and cause the fuse to trip or the circuit breaker to trip. That's uh, that's how the protection circuit works. It's, it's pretty simple stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we will uh, catch you in the next one real soon. I've got one of these things to uh, look at this. Isn't this in beat up, really beat up condition? An old uh, CCD TR81 Hi8 camera. Looks pretty rough. Don't know if it works or not, but. Uh, We'll fire this thing up and see whether we can make anything happen on this.